You're listening to the Alex Jones Broadcasting Network. Network. I love Baker Street. Defending the Republic from enemies, foreign and domestic, it's Alex Jones. Da, 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 da. Thank you for joining us on Faja's Day. I am your host, Alex Jones, and I want to just take a moment out to thank the great crew. They just, it's the best crew I've ever had, times five. They just get better and better. The whole crew, I hope to do a roundtable someday with them to discuss politics on air. And we'll maybe do it next week, the weekday show, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now, here's the conclusion of the speech. And if you want to see the speech and you're a radio listener, go to InfoWars.com. But here's the last three minutes uh, of the speech I gave a few weeks ago that I think was one of my more concise, focused diatribes promoting the terroristic idea of human freedom. Here it is. I, I mean, this is treason openly being said because they can't hide it anymore. Now they want to, in a confidence game, hide it in plain view. If we all start speaking out, if all of you start a blog, all of you start a YouTube channel, it's so easy. All of you call into talk radio. All of you go to the state house. There are more of us than there are of them times 100. And they will literally implode in on themselves right now, just like Ceausescu in Romania, just like so many other despots and dictators. This society of people that don't like individuals and who get power out of groups and out of gangs and out of sucking off of people is coming to an end if we want it to. The only question is how long will it take? How much hell will we have to go through before we as a people worldwide say no to the collectivist. But how do individuals say no to collectivist? Well, the lie of the collectivist is we all collectivize and let central planners at the Politburo, at the UN, at UNESCO, tell us how to live in the central committee. It's the opposite. We are all individuals, but collectively through our choices and through the free market of ideas, finance, industry, agriculture can reverse this trend as simply as flicking a fly off of our knee if we realize the power we have and collectively make decisions that stand in the way of the tyrants. If we are able to do this, our destiny is literally unlimited. Humans are only happy when we're daring, when we're trailblazing, when we're inventing, when we're being challenged and challenging each other, and when we have the right of free expression and the right of free association. And the technocrats want to control the future. They want to control our development selfishly for themselves and are in a war against the individual and in a war against what's left of the United States of America. And that's why it's essential for everyone to realize that you are critical in this fight and we are actually coming from behind and now every metric shows are in the lead. Because even though the establishment has dumbed down the general public and even though half the public can't even tie their shoelaces, it doesn't matter. Those poor zombies are out of the game. What matters is that the vast majority of that other 50% are the producers. And we run this country and we run this world. And if we simply stop complying in little ways, it will bring this system down. 5% defeated the British that had never been defeated in their history. We have way more than 5%, I'd say close to 10% that are really figuring out what's happening. We wake up another 10%, it's over. We can have a new golden age of human liberty worldwide. Thank you so much for coming out today. I want to salute you all for your quest for freedom. And there is my speech in Dallas. And that's what a prepared speech looks like. I rarely do those, but that was a prepared speech. We're going to go to break. I'm going to come back and cover a bunch of news on several key areas. You can probably guess. I'm going to get into the gun grabbing that's going on and, and, and the militarization of police tied into that that's even in mainstream news. Then, the exclusive premiere, just like that speech. I want to make the Sunday show more like a magazine show where we just have just everything crammed into it, a lot of premieres of interviews and other key things. Uh, Ron Paul interviewed by Kit Daniels on Common Core and a host of issues. That's coming up. Another subject uh, I'm going to get into in the last segment of the transmission as well at the end of this hour. So please tell your friends and family and free association to join us in the Council of Liberty.
against the Council of Tyranny. Straight ahead on the other side, InfoWars.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Edward Group. It took me 20 years of searching the globe to find the deposit of the highest purity iodine available. The new Survival Shield X2 is mined from seven to 10,000 feet below the earth in pristine, environmentally clean conditions. The iodine crystals we use are extracted from an ancient 300 million plus year old deposit deep in the earth. It's the strongest nascent iodine on the market today. It delivers 650 micrograms per drop. Experience the new formula. Experience the ancient purity. Shield your family. Survival Shield X2, available now at InfoWarsLife.com. X2 from InfoWarsLife.com or call toll free 888-253-3139. a bizarre feeling every day and every night to spend hours, three or four hours, five hours sometimes studying news, video clips from Congress, global news, and to just see stuff we talked about 10, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years ago becoming passe. It's mind boggling that it's all really happening and unfolding and that we were so accurate here at InfoWars, historically uh, predicting where this would go as futurist. And that's why the radio broadcast has exploded. Again, I'm your host, Alex Jones, on this Sunday, June 15th, Father's Day Worldwide Transmission. Isn't Father's Day the exact middle of the year? Isn't June 15th the middle of the year? I mean, can you believe that we're already halfway into 2014? That's mind-blowing. Anyways, you're listening to and, and watching, if you're watching on PrisonPlanet.tv or the free video feeds at InfoWars.com forward slash show right now, you're watching us here on Sunday. And there's so much I want to get into. We've got Ron Paul interviewed by our reporter for InfoWars Nightly News. He's really a print writer, but uh, Kit Daniels did an in-depth interview with Ron Paul. We're premiering uh, here coming up in the next uh, two segments. Then I've got other news in the final segment that I'll be uh, hosting here today. And I have a short report from InfoWars Nightly News Friday uh, that Jakari Jackson did that tied into the news uh, on the open borders I'm about to cover. But I tweeted on Friday morning, about 6 in the morning, I, I just got up and it hit me. George Washington, more than anybody, launched this country. And Barack Obama, as the figurehead, still deserves credit. He is a great man. Because he's America's slayer. For all intents and purposes, this country's gone, folks. They've bankrupted it. They've shut it down. Obamacare is written to bankrupt poor people. Seven taxes on the poorest people, written by foreign banks. And they're loving it. Some of the poor people, most of them have woke up, but it doesn't matter. The establishment's behind him, and he is the America Slayer. Heard of Dragon Slayers, you've heard of whatever. Obama is blowing the engine of this country. Like I say, he's blowing it. He's already blown it. I mean, no one's ever said 30 million illegals are legal. If you can get here, we're going to give you free welfare. We're going to stop deportations. The Border Patrol is being totally overrun. Hundreds of military bases are filled with thousands of children. They're saying NPR has promos advertising, give money to charities that pay for kids to get plane tickets here. And then they give them lawyers when they get here, taxpayer paid for, and, and they like basically stay in you know, government hotels, 250 bucks a day at these bases with like butlers while veterans are homeless. I mean, it is just incredible 
how they use the freedom of our society to infiltrate it and take it over. And uh, of course they treat veterans horrible. They're not, most of them, Democratic voters. And I've never been a Republican, but they're trying to extinct the Republican Party right now as the libertarians take it over and every major neocon, every major rhino get, loses in the primaries. In Texas, in Virginia, they're freaking out about David Bratt because there is a resistance forming and their answer is, hey, we'll just bring in half of Latin America. Hundreds of thousands of youth coming in every few months and they're talking about it being millions now. They're calling it a natural disaster. It's not natural. Criminals in government are orchestrating it. ISSA says the flood's going to the congressman I mean, kids are going to die trying to get here. We had a lot of them are mules bringing drugs in. Crisis leaves vast swaths of border, unprotected cartels in control, says head of the Border Patrol Union. New dumping grounds. Administration quietly redistributes illegal aliens throughout military bases as far north as Massachusetts. Amnesty activists storm Cantor's HQ after concession speech. I mean, it's like an anti-American cult. They've taught the large swaths of the minorities, who are the majority already, that it's all about black politics, Hispanic politics, Asian politics. What about freedom, like Bill of Rights, private property? Man, let me tell you something. I'd care less if they were bringing in 30 million illegal aliens that went and got jobs and were pro-liberty and pro-gun. I'd say, oh, we just beat all the globalists. Now we're going to have guns and private property. I don't, I don't care if they had green skin. I'll be honest, folks. They had green skin coming in. It's mainly Latin Americans. They were pro-freedom. I'd be, <laughs> but they're not. It, it, it's socialism. It's communism. It's the end of, the, I mean, have you been to Latin America? I've been there. It's beautiful. I've been to Central America, South America. I've been to Mexico. Man, I've been there my whole life. It's a hellhole now. The Caribbean used to be safe. It's dangerous as hell now. It's just failed corruption, and now it fits right into the Chicago crime machine. And if we don't turn it around, this country is over. Now, continuing here, ladies and gentlemen, there are several articles that I have, but there's videos up on Infowars.com that break this down. Last Thursday, we sent uh, Joe Biggs and some of the other crew up to or down to San Antonio, down to the military base, the Air Force base, uh, down there, and Lackland, and it was just thousands of illegals there just being pampered, adults, children, you name it, and they wouldn't let them on the base. They said, oh, no media is allowed to see this. They had inside the base another base with coverings, but we got in, stuck a camera to the fence, got video of it. It's up on Infowars.com. They're advertising the world, dump your kids here. It's incredible. Meanwhile, Obama is in Reuters, RT, you name it, CBS News. Obama cites Australia's gun confiscation program as example for U.S. and says he may sign an executive order to start gun confiscation. Here's a London Guardian article. Pentagon preparing for mass civil breakdown, takeover of society, not just in the U.S., but worldwide. Again, that's public. I've told you what's going on, but the collapse is designed. Let's go to Jakari Jackson's report on... Obama setting up illegal alien takeover bases where our military bases are now illegal alien staging grounds where they're just being released. Plane loads get here, they're just released into the public. That's in the El Paso Times. Here it is. In today's politically correct climate, where even a peanut butter and jelly sandwich is considered racist, it's no surprise that schools are teaching students to shun patriotism. A Coney Island principal has banned her students from singing another, quote, USA song. Another needs to be emphasized. When asked about her decision, Principal Greta Hawkins reportedly said the teachers didn't ask permission to do it. In California, a school banned students from wearing American flag t-shirts on Cinco de Mayo. Some said the act was offensive to students of a different national origin. With all that said, if American students are being discouraged from indulging in Americana, why are immigrant children being housed on the taxpayer's dime? Children from South American countries are surrendering to American Border Patrol so they can be whisked away to American military bases that cater to their needs. We're here at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas, where one of the former uh, basic training dorms has been reappropriated to house about 2,000 illegal immigrants. Wow. And we, uh, we found the area where they're being housed. There's a, it's uh, barricaded with fi uh, fences all around it with uh, privacy screens to try to keep people from looking into it. 
Uh, there's a there's several porta potties in the area. One that 